Hello everybody. The book I want to talk about today is called Suvashun or in the dialect of the region Savashun. It is about a family living in Shiraz. Uh, Shiraz is a city in Iran and the author Semin Danishva is actually the first woman novelist in Iran. It's largely considered as the first one. Before we get into the book, I want to talk about some historical backgrounds to um, make the like subjects and the things that the book is dealing with um, easier to understand. The time period the story ha is happening is the end of World War II and Iran is occupied by Allied forces. Iran has already announced its neutrality during World War II. Despite that, um, Allied forces came to occupy the country. Their excuse was that some German experts still exist in the country, which was nothing unusual because um, many experts, um, foreign experts, worked, for example, in the oil industry or in like different engineering uh, sections. In addition to that, tension and chaos are like spreading across the country. Different tribes are fighting with each other and with central government. They want uh, for example, their lands back, which was taken from them by the new regime. They want also more power. They want, most importantly, independence. These tension and conflicts among tribes were also supported by the foreign forces. And in many cases also initiated because that is, that is known that if you want to control the people and control the government, make tension within a country. But the question is what they really wanted, those foreign forces. First and foremost, they wanted grain. Uh, they forced, or in some cases even, uh, convinced the landowner, the land, landowner of the country, the important and influential people of the country, to sell them grain so that they spread this grain among their army and export the rest of it. But grain is something that the lives of the people uh, is relied on. Grain is something, grain is a main source of food for the people. So as a result, uh, it went scarce and many people were starving. Um, and they, of course, did not care. Even in some cities, uh, for many days, bread went scarce and people were really frightened. And, oh God, we have nothing to eat anymore. The government could not solve the problem. The government could not feed uh, its own people. The attitude of those um, people like English, also German and Russian, was kind of humiliating toward the local people. They were looking down on the people. Uh, English gentleman, for example, came and said, we brought you civilization, we brought you uh, culture, and we are teaching you how to behave because you have nothing and you don't know anything about it. And that was not what the people really wanted. People wanted peace and prosperity. But of course, there were some people who could not bear the situation and they refused to give in. Uh, as I said, the story is about a, a family, Yusuf, the husband, Zari, the wife, and their three children. Uh, they are a land-owning family. Yusuf come from a powerful and rich family of landowners, but he's also very courageous and kind people to his kind person to his people. So he refuses to sell grain to the foreigners. He says, "No, the situation is really bad. Currently, people are starving, and uh, my grain is for my my own people." Zari, on the other hand, uh, his wife is someone who wants. Um, mostly peace and happiness for her family and of course one cannot blame her she is more reserved and she wants to bring up her children in a peaceful calm environment at some point in a book even Zari says this house referring to her own house and this garden is like my own country she implied that uh, she she does not really care about uh, what's going on beyond the border of her house and that is like everything she cares about. Uh, but throughout the book we see that it really does not remain the way it is and conflicts are like also finding their way through her house as well. Uh, but that's not 
the way Zari will remain until the end of the book because things are happening and she's also seen constantly that the things that are going around her. Uh, the book is written in third, pers third person limited and we are following Zari's thoughts and her observation about everything. Uh, we see, for example, that Zari sees actually the typhus is spreading across the country and the only hospital in the city um, refuses to give service to anyone other than their own army and also influential and important people. I think what the book wants to wants us also to ask ourselves is that is that is it even right? Is it even something moral that you just close your eyes and live peacefully and isolated in among your own family? And even if you manage to do that, is it going to change anything like for the next generations, for the people are coming after um, and after you? She does not want to involve her, herself directly with politics. She is for most a mother and a wife. And it is also not expected from a woman of that time to be involved in such, in such matters. But there are some, th some things which are innovatable. And that's also the interesting point of the story. The woman at her position uh, also starts to be involved actually with, with those things. Uh, so constantly, I think as a reader also, we are asking alongside Zari what is correct, now what behavior, what should she do? Uh, and that is also reflected in the conversation of Zari with other people around her and the conversation of other characters with each other. Everyone has a different point of view. The writing uh, was very simple and easy to follow. It is not a fast, fast-paced story, it is slow, but like slowly we get to know characters and we get to know the way they talk the culture and even uh, interestingly some words which are used in only in that specific region Shiraz and like around it. Another interesting aspect of the story was its use of allegory. There are some similarities between some characters and events with characters and events of the Shahnameh. And Shahnameh is literally the name means Book of Kings and it's a series of epic poems about great heroes in ancient Persia. Even the name of the book, Suvashun, uh, is coming from an ancient mourning ceremony uh, for Siavash because Siavash uh, eventually dies in the book, in the uh, Shahnameh, the original story. But we also see other events and characters which have some similarities, reminds you of the stories in Shahnameh. So that was all about this book. Let me know what you think about it. Have you read it or are you planning to read it? Or do you have any other suggestion, whatever, in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one.